ติดติดสมจีลูมิทวีนูนจี The Defence Council for Nunjia, you may proceed with your question. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, Mr. Civil Party, um, we just established that uh, Chim was the prison chief of Ko Kor. Let me read to you uh, what you said uh, in relation to Chim um, in, uh, in respect of his arrest. Uh, this is again your DC Chem statement E3 slash 5643. Um, English ERN 3898 Khmer 00059404, French 00756648. This is what you said. Um, I arrested a Jim, the contemptible Jim. Uh, question What did he do wrong? And then you answered the following. He made up confessions. He just wrote this person was connected to this person. But after investigations, we found that he had arrested many people. So he was arrested. Well, he cried. And I said, that is your sin. He thought, I was kidding. I told him, be still. I did not yet take out the gun. There were two of us. You stay still. I tie you up, I told him. Well, how will you tie me, he asked. And I responded, I'm serious. I'm tying you up. He said, no. He did not let me tie him up. But I got the gun. He asked why I was doing that. I said it was now up to his fate. We put him onto the truck. He began crying out loud. He was brought to Kotom. End of quote. Mr. Civil Party, you recall telling this to the DC Chem investigator? Yum. Yes, I said so. But I remember that my answer was not that lengthy as you read. Uh, during the time when I pointed the gun at him, I did not talk much to him. Of course, he asked me why uh, he was arrested, what, what wrongdoing he committed. I told him that he made up the confessions and that was what I said. I did not say anything beyond that. Um, how long after you witnessed uh, the execution of 10 people uh, was Chim arrested by you? How long after the events of the execution? I recall that when the time I saw the execution, uh, he was not arrested yet. That I understand, uh, because you said he was uh, in charge on, of Cold Core Prison at the time of this execution of 10 people, but my question was, how long was it after the execution that you arrested Jim? As I said earlier, it happened uh, later on It was about two months later on. 
correction. It was about 10 days later after I saw the execution. It, it was not that long from the time when I saw the execution to the time uh, the chief of Koko prison was arrested. The time that I tie him up and put him on a track. Now, are you in a position uh, to tell us whether his arrest was somehow connected to the execution of 10 people? In other words, was he arrested because of his involvement in the execution of those 10 people? Are they no, the executions of the those ethnic groups was a, diff, a separate story, and his arrest was because of a diff, another different story that was because he made up the confessions. His arrest was not because of his executed the ten people. Now. Um, another question I have is how was it that you were in a position to tell that those 10 people that you saw being executed were in fact ethnic Vietnamese or ethnic Chinese how did you know did you know their names uh, did you know from which communes they were how is it that you knew that I did not say that uh, they were they were brought in because they were uh, of particular ethnic groups or where they were brought from. Those people spoke my clearly I did not have time to talk to them I only uh, saw the uh, execution but why is it then that you said to DC Chem and, uh, and you repeated that here yesterday that these 10 people were um, quote unquote Chinese and Vietnamese expatriates what, 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 why did you say that, if you, if you didn't know them? I did not say so. At the time that I witnessed the execution, I did not see whether they were ethnic Vietnamese or not. I, I did not say that they were ethnic Vietnamese. Um, this is civil party. I'm going to ask you a question now. And um, that sounds a bit peculiar when I'm gonna, um, what I'm going to say now. Um, but since um, um, both this court and the uh, lead co-lawyers for the civil parties have uh, neglected, um, apparently, advising you uh, that you have a right not to incriminate yourself, um, I will do so for you. So what I'm, what I'm about to ask you, you don't have to answer. Uh, but um, were you involved yourself in the execution of those 10 people somehow? For instance, did you make a list of names uh, that you subsequently provided to the district uh, committee or to anyone else?
President, Mr. Civil Party, please hold on. The floor is given to the lead co lawyer for Civil Party. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Just an observation here. It will be up, of course, to the Chamber to know if the question can be put or not. Uh, how can our colleague know that uh, know about what we're talking about with the civil party? So he should stop speculating uh, about what happens when we meet our clients. We do not speculate when he meets Nunchia. So this comment is particularly inappropriate. He should take care of his client, and we will take care of our clients. Fine. Let me shift my um, surprise not to the civil party lawyers, but to the chamber. Uh, I observe that every person that might incriminate himself, even if it's the lowest cadre, um, is accompanied by a standby counsel. And I'm just wondering why this particular um, civil party has no such counsel. So that's the reason I'm as advising him that he doesn't have the answer to, to answer the question. But the question is still relevant whether he himself was somehow involved in the execution of those 10 people. President, the floor is given to the deputy co-prosecutor. Uh, Your Honor, I these comments by, by counsel are, are highly improper. Um, it's not for him uh, to be advising uh, this witness, uh, the civil party. Um, uh, if the civil party uh, wanted counsel, he, he, he certainly he has counsel here to, to consult with. Uh, he's met with them. Um, he, this is a transparent effort um, to try to intimidate uh, he should ask his questions and he should stop playing games in this courtroom uh, by trying to intimidate um, the individuals who are here testifying. Fine. Then uh, please answer my question, uh, Mr. Civil Party. Uh, were you yourself involved in the execution of those 10 people? Did you make the list uh, with their names? Somehow, were you, uh, did you have a role to play in the execution of those 10 people? <clears throat> I did not receive any plan. The list that was drawn up from the communes were sent to me. I did, I did not even saw those lists. I was simply kept those lists. And because I was curious, I wanted to know how the execution was uh, taking place. I went there one time to to, 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 to that place, but I, I was not close to the execution site. I stood for about 10 meters away. And then I returned back to my, to my workplace. But with all due respect, uh, Mr. Civil Party, you were not just someone who uh, was, was peeping through the bushes or through a crack in the wall. You were the one that arrested the person responsible 10 days later. So you were not just an innocent bystander, correct? So, sorry, Council, you drew a conclusion. Innocent bystander is a white term. Please give me a break, uh, Judge Fenz. Ask questions. We'll, we'll allow you to ask questions, as you have seen. We'll so draw the conclusions. We are in the same trial as you are. Well. That I sincerely doubt. Um, Mr. Mr. Civil Party, um, were you not involved in the execution since you had the power to arrest the person who was responsible? I 
do not know how to give answer beyond that. I told you already that I went there and stood and uh, witnessed the execution. I did not participate in the execution. The term participate would mean that, you know, uh, join the shooting of those people. Uh, no problem, um, Mr. Civil Party. Let me move on to another subject. Uh, and that is the um, the alleged killing or the alleged policy of killing rather uh, of former uh, Khmer Republic officials. You said um, yesterday and also in your WRI that uh, officials from the former regime would not be spared and they needed to be smashed. And um, you said that this is something that you had learned at study sessions. Uh, my question to you is, uh, when was it that you heard this during study session? What year? Thank you. It, it was a long, long time ago. When I attended the study session, it was in 1972, 73, or 74, and that happened a long time ago. I cannot recall it well now. I cannot even recall the names of the uh, sector committee or district committee. Um, I understand, uh, Mrs. Hilpati, it's a long time ago, but. Um it is quite important uh, that you somehow tell us when exactly or when it was. Because if it was before 1975, then uh, killing of Khmer Republic soldiers would be legitimate because there was a war going on. So my question is, did you hear that officials from, uh, or, or soldiers from the former regime would not be spared before 17 April 75, or after 17 April 75? Ah, it was after 17 April. Fine. And now my question is, which year was it? Was it in 75, directly after liberation, or was it many years later, or a few years later, rather? I'm not quite certain about this. After 17 April 1975, I attended the political study session one time. At that time, my battalion in Takao, the place where I was based, they launched a study session and it focused about the uh, uh, cleansing. Um, well, you were a Southwest Song cadre, um, Mr. Civil Party, so it's, 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 it's important that we get the chronology straight. Was it shortly after April 75, or was it uh, a few months after 70, April 75, or was it two years after April 75? At that time, I attended the study session at the military unit where I was based. 
and after that I became a handicapped person. Um, if I have time, I will get back to the chronology. Um, who was it that said um, that officials from the former regime, including soldiers, would not be spared? Who said that? At that time, it was not a school, it was simply a session, a session uh, would be opened for three days. At the school, the study would take last for seven days. My unit had the responsibility to launch such a political study session to its members. I received that uh, training at my battalion. My question was, who was it? Was it your battalion commander who said this uh, about former officials and soldiers? And if yes, what was his name? As I told you earlier, it was called a political study session. It was it was not it 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 was not the opening session. And at that time, the one who gave us the lecture during the study session was my battalion commander named Pan. Um, and and um, from whom, if you know, did Pan get that instruction in relation to um, the fate of former Khmer Republic officials? Do you know what, whether he was speaking for himself or whether he was acting upon an instruction? I don't know anything else beyond that. I was under the instruction of bow, but beyond bow or above bow, I don't know who else was above him. Well, it's, it's important to understand whether uh, this Pan was speaking for himself, um, because we have quite some testimony in this, in this courtroom, uh, testimony from uh, district cadres such as Pek Jim, Sao Van, who all say that specifically in the southwest there was a policy not to touch soldiers all the way up until the rank of colonel. Is that something that you heard? President, Mr. Civil Party, please hold on. Deputy co prosecutor you may proceed. Uh, yes, I object to the way counsel has phrased his question. Uh, he's represented to the witness that everybody has said this. There are two out of about a hundred witnesses who have said this. The others have said the, op the opposite. So he can confront them with their testimony, but he shouldn't be representing, uh, representing to him uh, that this is what everybody says. I had, I had, I'm not sure if I said everybody, but if I did, I'll, I'll withdraw that. Um, I did mention um, District Cadre Peck Jim, who testified in this court, who said that very same thing. Uh, we have uh, Sao Van, who was a, uh, a, a district cadre at one point. Uh, we have, um, what's her name, um, Prak Yut, uh, who said the same thing. Um, ranking Southwest Zone cadres, who said 
uh, there was no such policy. Even Duik doesn't know of such, such policy. So um, I think uh, there's no need now, specifically because we all heard that destiny, to uh, read out the exact quotes from, the, from those people. Mr. President, I disagree. If he, <laughs> the practice here is if he wants to confront with evidence, he should use it. He shouldn't be characterizing because he's mischaracterizing evidence, uh, and I'm not going to get any detail because he's using uh, some names, um, uh, but uh, he should be using documents and following the court practice here. Yes, as per practice, if you confront him with testimony, obviously you have to give the references. You were there, you heard it. Uh, anyway, let me move on. Um, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Civil Party, uh, have you ever heard instructions um, that no one was to be touched below the rank of colonel? No, I did not know nor heard about it. Where was it that this pan, this battalion commander, talked about uh, uh, the officials of the former regime? Where was it this, where his study session was held? I was not clear about this, cannot recall it well about this, but I recall that the political study session at my unit at that time was that we had to smash the uh, former regime's officials, and that was the policies from the CPK that we had to follow. Well, you don't remember where it was that you heard this? Which, which, which place, which commune, which district, which sector, which zone? The, the lecture did not take place at any village or commune. It took place right in my battalion. And the battalion launched such a study session for its members. I understand that it was in your battalion, but where were you? Where was your battalion physically when you heard this? I cannot recall where that battalion headquarters was based. I mean the village and the commune which it was based. But at least you should be able to tell us the district uh, or the sector where you were, where your battalion was. Yes, I can give the answer. It was located in Kohandai district. It was close to the Khmer Yuan border in Kohandai district. Um, um, let me move on. I only have a few more minutes. Um, um, Mr. Civil Party. Um, 
That is something you said in your WRI E3 slash 409, question and answer 44. Um, you're talking about the principle that law no soldiers had to be smashed. But in that same answer, you said um, the people were classified in two categories, uh, the new people and the base people. And then you say, quote unquote, the new people had to be smashed, end of quote. Did you say that? Yum. I don't mean that I forget about uh, what I said, but I did not say that. So you, you, there was no such, there was, an, there was no policy uh, to smash new people, correct? I didn't say anything uh, regarding this matter. That is uh, after the 17 April 1975 event, because uh, later on I became a handicapped a soldier. Um, one, one last subject, um, as returning to the issue of, of, of um, people of Vietnamese or Chinese origin. Um, what I don't understand is why was it that people of Chinese origin were supposed to be executed? I only knew and heard about the killing uh, during that one particular event and I could not know any further detail because I did not know from which level the order came and I could not elaborate any further regarding the uh, CPK plans or policy. I, un I understand. That, um, let's, let's, let's move away from, from the execution of those 10 people. Um, but you said in DC Chem, your DC Chem interview, um, English here in 00753855, Khmer 0005935050, and French 00796598. You said, quote unquote, there was a plan to smash ethnic Vietnamese and ethnic Chinese. Why was there a plan to smash ethnic Chinese? I already responded to the questions that I did not know about that. So you didn't know about a plan to smash ethnic Chinese? Am I to understand that you also didn't know about a plan to smash ethnic Vietnamese? President Silver Party, please hold on and call prosecutor to the floor. That's not what the witness just testified. He was asked about the reason, not whether there was a plan. He was asked what the reason was for killing. And he said he didn't know the reason why the plan included killing the Chinese. Fine, no problem. I will, I will uh, adjust. Uh, and, and Mr. Silverbody, just to, to, to make sure that I understand properly, you don't know um, what the reason was about potentially smashing ethnic Chinese, but, but just to make sure, was there a policy to kill Chinese people? I already 
responded to that question. I did not know about uh, those plans. I was a subordinate and I was not a main leader. President, Council for Nunchi, can you inform the chamber whether you coordinated with Kiev's and Point Defense regarding the remaining time? I can respond, Mr. President. I had indicated to my colleague that I needed 15 to 20 minutes in order to question the civil party. So we should finish before the lunch break. Thank you for the information. And uh, Defense Council for Noon GH, you may continue. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. President, just a few more minutes. Um, Mr. Um, civil Party, were you, did you know whether there were um, Chinese advisors to the Revolutionary Army in Democratic Kampuchea between 75 and 79? can get the same response that I did not know about uh, that because during the regime I became a handicapped uh, soldier. Um, one, one last thing uh, before I hand over the floor to my colleague. Um, yesterday you were asked something about, a, uh, about an alleged slogan. Um, saying that there was supposed to be no other race than the Khmer in uh, democratic Kampuchea. I, I believe you even said everybody um, knew about that slogan. Um, wh where did you read this? Where did you hear this? Well, let, let me ask you first, did you ever read this in a revolutionary flag, for instance? Anything about that? So there was no such slogan, uh, no other race than the command, correct? As I have stated, from that time. And until now, everything was uh, finished. It's already fortunate for me uh, to uh, survive since I had served uh, the country for a long time and I did not want to uh, know anything about uh, the regime. Well, entirely sure if that's correct, but uh, I will finish my questions, Mr. Civil Party. Thank you, Mr. President. So, Council for Kiyos and Pon, you may proceed with your questioning. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Mr. Civil Party. My name is Ante Kise. I am a co-international lawyer representing Mr. Kyo Sampan, and it is in this capacity that I will ask you a few questions. I will be quite brief. I would like to return to a few things that you said regarding your role in arranging marriages. I had understood that you said yesterday a bit after nine 
a clock, 55 minutes, 52 seconds, and I quote, the question that was asked of you was how you arrange marriages, and you said, I simply followed the orders given by the district chief who wanted me to proceed as follows. I needed to gather the biographies of the men and women in the mobile unit and then decide who should be married to whom. I simply followed the instruction of the district committee. It was not my own decision." End quote. My first question in this regard is that I'd like to know, were you simply in charge of arranging a marriages among those working in the mobile units and the women's unit, or did you also arrange marriages for those in the communes and villages? I received a work assignment uh, from the district committee for members of a mobile units who reached the age of marriage. The district secretary instructed me to uh, bring lists of names from both male and female mobile units and uh, match them. And later on, he uh, made uh, such an announcement during the uh, marriage ceremony. Um. Perhaps my question wasn't very clear. I had understood this point. My question was to know if you only dealt with marriages in a mobile unit or if you also dealt with that issue in the communes and villages. For the two uh, wedding ceremony, Moniz, I was uh, responsible for only the mobile units, but I was not responsible for all other communes within the district of Sa'an. Donc, si je comprends bien. So, if I understand correctly, at the level of the commune, and I will reread what you said the 29th of August at approximately 11.13 in the morning, you indicated that it was the commune chiefs who were responsible for arranging marriages in their cooperatives and in the cooperatives in their commune. Did I understand correctly that at this level it was the commune chiefs who were responsible for arranging marriages and that you as a district committee, you were not involved in that. Did I correctly understand? Yes, uh, that is true. Um, I'm asking you these clarifications because we heard from a district chief from Barai, Tekpok, and this was on the hearing of the 20th of August, and he indicated the following concerning the role of the district committee in marriages, saying that this was a bit before 316, 342, uh, 316, 42 seconds. The head of the district, the district chief, made the proposal, and then it was the district who made the decision, and the decision was handed down in writing." End quote. So my question is, I'd like to know, as far as your district, Sang, is concerned, did the commune chiefs, those who were in charge of the cooperatives, come with proposals that you then needed to uh, decide on, or did you 
have nothing to do with what the communes and villages decided. At that time, the authority was vested with each commune and that they had to uh, select and marry those uh, Jews belonging to their respective communes. At the uh, district or its uh, surrounding areas, there were male and female mobile units and members of those uh, du mobile units were organized uh, to get uh, married at the district office of uh, Sa'ang and that I uh, attended such uh, wedding ceremonies for or on two occasions. Okay, donc je, je... All right, then I understand from your answer that the communes were independent and they organized marriages as they understood they should at the level of their commune and cooperative. So now I'm going to ask questions more specifically about the process, about what happened at the district level. You indicated that it was you in your role as deputy chief of the district, looked at the lists and arranged the marriages. My question is, when you were given these lists, did you have requests that had been uh, proposed by the heads of the mobile units? When you were given a list, did they say to you, this person asked if they could marry that person, etc.? And did you take into account these requests if they were presented to you? units, that is the male and female mobile units, according to the plan of the district committee, had to uh, select, let's say, 20 to uh, 30 couples, or 25 couples on one particular occasion. Then the uh, respective mobile units would select the numbers and submitted uh, those uh, names to PON and PON would assign me to match those uh, people based on where they lived and their age range and that the men had to be three to five years older than the women and that's what I did. In the context of this procedure at one time or another, did you make sure that the future spouses agreed, or was it only on the day of the ceremony that you received this agreement from the future spouses? I no, never said that. After the wedding ceremonies, those people were taken to uh, communes by the commune chiefs. Perhaps there was a problem in the interpretation. My question was, I will phrase it differently. When you spoke of the marriage ceremony when you said that it was Pan who indicated to the future spouses that if there were people who didn't want to get married to each other they could tell us and leave my question is was there another time other than the day of the ceremony that you as the deputy chief of the district committee did you take any particular measures in order to find out if the future spouses 
agreed to the marriage or not? Or was it up to the head of the mobile unit, or did this only happen the day of the ceremony? From my understanding of your question, and uh, based on my previous uh, response, upon uh, my the announcement uh, about uh, the uh, couples, he says that uh, those couples from both sides, male and uh, female side, if any of them dislike uh, one another, they could uh, stand up and uh, walk away. He gave them uh, such a right. D'accord. All right, then. My question, I, I, I underst what I understand from your answer, rather, is that on the day of the ceremony, that's when the question was asked, you as Deputy Chief of District, you did not get any such information before the day of the ceremony. Is that what I should understand from your answer? Nobody knew about that. And those men and women also did not know anything about that. And only on the day of the ceremony, they were called by their respective chief, unit chiefs, uh, to attend the wedding ceremony. Donc. So I want to be certain that I understand correctly. You, yourself, you took the decision, but you had not taken any particular measures to inform the people before the ceremony, nor to have their agreement before the ceremony. That was not part of the work that you carried out. I have not heard an answer to my question. I, I, I thought I heard Ba in Khmer. Can you, can you confirm what I just said? Because we, we didn't receive any interpretation into French. My response uh, was uh, yes, uh, that is true. Um, I would like to come back very briefly to a passage of your DCCAM statement that the co-prosecutor read to you yesterday. I would like to reread it so that you can truly understand the spirit of it. Of course, understanding that I will be posing a different question than the prosecution. And Mr. President, I'm referring to E3-5643 ERN in French, 00. 756607, ERN in English, 00753864, and in Khmer, the ERN is 00059360, and it continues on to the next page, and in French, that also continues on to the next page. So, I will be asking you questions you find out if the reports were sent higher up to the upper echelons, and you said there were no reports. And the next question that was asked to you is, were the reports not sent to the Central Committee? And your response was no. It didn't even go up to the level of the commune. 
these people, when they hated someone, when they felt revenge t towards someone, the, then they tried to change the truth. There was a society, but the law existed only on paper. It was complete anarchy. Everything depended on the individuals who held the power. So this was the village and commune chiefs. They could do whatever they wished. No one was monitoring them. No one had any control over them. They did not hesitate to make reports in order to justify having killed one person or another, classifying them as enemies or having done one thing or another thing." End quote. When the co-prosecutor spoke to you about this passage, you said you were speaking from your experience and what you had lived through. So my question is, for example, in Sahong District, where you were a deputy chief of the district committee, did you have any examples of a village chief or commune chief who altered the truth and committed abuses of power by wrongly accusing people of having been enemies? And if you remember, do you remember of the villages or communes in those examples? No, I did not come across such an incident. You say that you did not have any such incident. However, when you were interviewed by DC Cam, these were your words. So therefore, my question is, on what basis did you make these statements? The work or that kind of event uh, happened throughout uh, the country under the regime of Democratic Cambodia, and everybody everybody spoke about it. D'accord. Donc quand vous dites tout. All right. Then when you say everyone was talking about it, can you tell us at what time you heard about it, and do you have any examples of uh, from the. Uh, district where you worked. I did not know uh, concretely about the matter because uh, it was a uh, word of mouth and my recollection is uh, not uh, that clear. That's all I can say. Tout à l'heure, a while ago, responding to my uh, co colleague from the Nuchea team, you spoke of Chim, saying that you proceeded to arrest him because he had made a certain number of false accusations towards people who had not done anything wrong. Is this an example of abuse of power such as you speak of when you spoke to DC Cam, or are you also thinking of something else? What I said was that. Uh, I and San were instructed uh, by Pon to arrest the uh, prison chief. And uh, the reason was that he falsified the confessions, and that was the reason for his arrest. He simply uh, made up a report about the confessions, 
So the term here, the proper term here is uh, that he falsified the report and the confessions. I know that we're coming close to the break. The last question, Mr. President. Uh, I'm putting these questions to you because uh, this is not the only segment in which uh, you indicated this in your DCCAM statement. There's another passage I would like you to react to. So it's in the same document, E3-5643, French ERN 0075650, English 0075380. Nine nine and Khmer zero 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 five nine four zero six and the question that was put to you is the following and they were speaking about the ECCCC so this tribunal is only trying the senior leaders so do you believe only the senior leaders should be tried or also people from the lower ranks and your answer was the following I would like people from the lower ranks to be tried. I believe that this would be better. Indeed, and it is this particular part in the sentence I'd like to focus on, it was they who altered and ruined the party line. End of quote. So can you explain to the chamber what you mean by it is they who altered and uh, ruined the line? Can I recall whether I made that, that a statement? People, I heard this from other people who uh, said the same thing. That is uh, from the times that I started uh, my service uh, in 1970. I heard people speaking about uh, this. But I myself did not have any uh, great uh, knowledge about it. You are speaking to me about 1970, and I'm speaking to you about events that took place between 75 and 79. So could you specify if uh, you heard between 75 and 79 people tell you that uh, the party line had been altered and uh, that uh, what was applied at the local level did not correspond to the policy that had been uh, set by the party. Did you ever hear about that? I heard all the words uh, starting uh, from 17 April 1975. I believe my time is up, Mr. President, so I will stop here unless uh, the chamber allows, gives me five uh, extra minutes uh, when we resume uh, after lunch uh, so that I might try to obtain more uh, clarity. Council, you may have five minutes from now. Thank you. Civil Party, you have just told us, well, this is what I heard in French in any case, that uh, after 17 April 1975, you heard other words. Uh, so the answer is not very clear to me. So could you please be more specific? My question was, uh, did you hear people criticize the way the party policy uh, was implemented. And this is still uh, connected uh, to uh, your DCCAM statement, which I read out to you earlier. Um.
it's not the, from the ma my imagination. But I uh, feel that the lower cadres at the communes or district level arrested people and killed. But I did not say that seriously. It was simply a, an informal chatting among us. It was just a just a, a joke, a, a, a simple informal chatting. That's kind of a funny joke, but uh, with whom would you chit chat in this way? No, I cannot recall whom, with whom I chatted. We talked about that under the influence of alcohol. I will stop here, Mr. President. President, thank you, Council. Mr. Seng Seun, as a civil party in this chamber, you may make a victim's impact statement concerning the crimes which are alleged against the two accused, Nguyen Chi and Kiu Somporn, and harms inflicting upon you during the democratic Cambodia regime from 17 April 1975 to 6 January 1979, and other harms that caused on you, mainly the physical, material, and mental injuries as direct consequences of those crimes. And those resulted in your civil, ap civil party application to claim collective and moral reparation for, for those crimes. And you may proceed if you have any of those to, to present. And you may also pose questions to the two accused through the chamber. Civil party. I do not have much to say, but I would like to request to the chamber that my life suffered a lot from 1970 to now. I served the nation and I sacrificed for the nation. I became a handicapped soldier. My relatives were killed. And those suffering was beyond words to describe. I myself, as a handicapped person, suffered a lot. I do not know the, the words that I should use to describe about this situation, about the experiences I encountered in my life. President, thank you, Mr. Civil Party. The, testimony, the hearing of the testimony of Mr. Singh Sien now came to an end. Mr. Singh Sien, the hearing of your testimony as a civil party is now concluded. Your presence in this courtroom is no longer required, and therefore you may be excused. The chamber wishes you all the best. Court officer, in collaboration with Visu, please make necessary transport arrangement to send Mr. Saint Sion to his home. And the court will resume in the afternoon. And in the afternoon session, the court will hear the testimony of two TCCP two eight six. Security personnel are instructed to bring Kiu Sumpon to the holding cell.